Okay, now in this section we'll continue with uh, PPP. Probably PPP is the encapsulation which we which you generally use because of having some more options inside the PPP. In that, the first option we'll see how to configure PPP authentication method. So PPP supports two authentication methods. One is PAP and CHAP. You can see the headings here. Uh, PAP stands for Password Authentication Protocol. CHAP stands for Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. So if you if you try to understand the difference, the major difference between these two is the, in the PAP, the authentication process is done in a clear text where the password is sent in a clear text. Whereas in case of CHAP, the authentication is done in an encrypted format where uh, where it is going to send some MD5 uh, digest value. So MD5 digest value is something like uh, it's a code which is going to run on both the sides of the router. So let's say I'm going to configure a password on Cisco 123 and Cisco 123 on both the sides. And if if the it's going to send, it's not going to send the password. Instead, it's going to generate one code. We call it as MD5 digest code after running the algorithm and then it's going to send on the remote device. So once this device receives that code, it is going to run the same algorithm on, on the other side of the device. And if it is running the same algorithm, then obviously it should get the same code uh, that is Cisco 123, the password has to match. If it matches, it says uh, it says the authentication is successful and the link link will come up. And if it, does, if it is not matching in that case, then it's going to make the interface status as up and down. So which means the physical link is up, whereas the protocol status will be down. Okay. Now the advantage we get in the chap is it provides some more secure exchange of the password when compared with uh, with the with PAP authentication method. That is the one major difference between these two. And the other difference is the password authentication is two. -way. It's the same thing, you know, two-way handshake, and here we call as three-way handshake process. Now let me explain you that uh, in my next diagram here, I got the difference. Now here we call it as two-way handshake process. When the two-way handshake process, whenever a router one tries to establish a connection with router three, it's going to send, uh, it is going to send a password without asking generally. It says, this is my username and this is my password. And the router three is going to verify that username and the password. It's going to match if it is matches, if it is yes, then it's going to establish the connection. If it is wrong password or if there is any mismatch of the configuration, it's going to simply reject the connection. So it's a two-way handshake process. So whereas in case of CHAP authentication, also it's going to be the same uh, username, password and those things. But uh, whenever this router is, uh, tries to establish the connection, the device will send a random challenge. Challenge is nothing but uh, it's a, it's like code. It's requesting for a code before you establish a connection. Send me a code. So which means in the chat, the username password is auto initiated by the devices. Whereas here we need to do it manually. We need to set these things. So here it is automatic automatic uh, uh, username and the password verification happens. But whereas in case of PAP, we need to manually say send username password. That's something we need to initiate it manually. Uh, more on this, you will understand when we do the configuration. But here, it's going to automatically generate a challenge, which is like a requesting a username and a password. And based on that, the device will send the username and the password. And then whether it will accept the connection or reject the connection. Now, when I say username and the password, nothing but it's a code, you know, MD5 code or MD5 a message digest value. That's something, you know, it's not exactly username and the password, but whatever the code it generates, it's going to send that. And then the device, once it receives, it's going to try to match the code. Uh, if it matches, it's going to accept or else it will simply reject the connections. So we'll go ahead and verify practically these two protocols. So before we verify, let's try to understand what are the commands we need to configure if you want to do some PAP configuration or chap configuration so to implement and verify this i got two routers and both the routers are connecting on s1 by 0 sorry i think s1 by 0 now here in the diagram you can see s0 by 0 in fact in my physical topology or my gns program here what i'm using in my routers the connection between the two routers i'm using s1 by 0 
okay so just change it to s1 by 0 here so s1 by 0 here so the first thing uh, if you want to enable authentication we need to create a username and the password and this username it has to match the exact host name of the remote router so it has to match the host name of the remote router let's say uh, my host name is r-1 here i'm assuming and the host name is r-2 here now whenever we are creating the username on the router 2 uh, it should match the exact host name of the remote device uh, there are some cases where it's not mandatory we have some additional configurations required for that but if you are going with some of the basic configurations the username has to be the exact host name host name means I hope you understand this is a host name it should match the exact host name whatever is here okay and the password can be anything but the password has to be same on both the sides so on the router 2 we need to create a username uh, which is going to match uh, the exact host name uh, it has to be case sensitive again the host name passwords everything is case sensitive so just keep that in mind so username has to match the exact remote host name so on the router 2 we are going to give the username as router 1 and on the router 1 we are going to give, give a username of router 2 so probably in your production networks you might have different names like uh, location names whatever it is ensure that you are going to create the username exact uh, matches the remote host name now apart from that this is the one first configuration we need to do so the first configuration will be we need to create a host name and the host name and the password now the second thing is we need to get into the interface under the interface whichever connecting between the two routers in my scenario it is s1 by 0 interface the first command we need to change the encapsulation to ppp because if you remember we discussed that the default encapsulation default encapsulation on the serial link is what it's going to be hdlc so because here hdlc do not support authentication we need to change from hdlc to ppp now to change we need to give this command encapsulation ppp and after that uh, by default if there is no authentication then only these commands are enough okay if you configure only these two commands which means I'm going to use PPP but without authentication but once I decided to configure this command here encapsulate PPP authentication this one once you enable this command it means that you want to use authentication if I don't configure then it's okay if you don't configure this command it means that uh, there is no authentication enabled but still we are running ppp that is also one possible thing you can do but if you configure this command it means that i want to enable authentication and the command will be ppp we need to say authentication and in that authentication we need to say either pap or chap which authentication method or which authentication process you want to use now in both the cases i'm using pap authentication as of now okay and then and the last command we need to do is if you're using pap then we need to we need to manually generate this send username command so we need to say pap send username r2 and then the password is same now this is something we need to create manually on the interface because uh, whenever the link is established as i said we need to manually generate this command which is going to say that send the username as my local host name and the password okay now this is the minimum configuration we need to do so let's go with the minimum configuration first and then we'll practically verify this and then i'll, I'll also add, try to add some additional configurations which we need to do uh, if required okay so first let us start with the same thing so i'm going to draw my topology here uh, as of now according to my default configuration i got router one connecting to router 2 on s1 by 0 and the ip address i'm using 1.1.1.1 1.1.1.2 at both the sides i'm using the default encapsulation is hdlc i think we changed to ppp in the previous video so let's verify so on the router 1 i'm going to verify show interface s1 by 0 here you can see i'm using ppp encapsulation even on the router 2 also 
I'm using PPP encapsulation because in my previous session I have changed to PPP. So the next thing, anyway, even now in this scenario, I don't have any authentication process, but I want to use authentication process. So I want to use PAP authentication. So let's go with PAP authentication here. So the first configuration will be we need to we need to create a username on both the sites. Let's start with router one first. On the router one, I'm going to create a username, username r-2. There's no hyphen because if you see on the router two, I'm going to use just r2 here. So the username, whatever we are creating, it has to match the exact remote host name, r2 password. I'm going to use Cisco 123 in small letters and without space. So same thing, let's do the same thing on the router two as well, username r1, just r1, capital R1 and the password is Cisco123, all small letters and without spaces. So the next thing, we need to go to the interface, the interface S1 by 0. Now what, I, what I'm going to do is, just for verification, I'm going to enable the debug commands. Uh, this is something not really required for you to do, uh, not really recommended in the production networks, but it's really uh, good to know, you know, if you just want to see the backend process, what's happening, we can always use this command. Probably it will also be useful in case if you are uh, doing some troubleshooting, but most likely it is not required. So, so I'm going to enable this debug PPP authentication just for testing purpose. As of now, uh, we don't have any outputs because we did not enable authentication on that interface. So let's do that. I'm going to say PPP authentication. Uh, most commonly, I prefer to use uh, PAP or CHAP. In fact, this it supports some other authentication methods like uh, Microsoft CHAP or Microsoft version 2, PAP, CHAP and even extensible authentication protocol. These are all the authentication which are supported on the router serial interfaces but probably in your CCI routing system exams or CCNP syllabus, you will be tested only on these two authentication methods which is PAP and CHAP. Okay, so so I'm going to enable PAP authentication on router 1 as well as I'm going to do the same thing on the router 2 as well, PPP authentication PAP. So as of now you can see, so if I go and check the interface status on the router 1, I should see the interface status will go up and down because the reason is uh, one side we have, we, we have enabled the authentication but uh, it actually we didn't configure everything on that interface. There's one more command left. What is that? PPP send PPP PAP Send username. Now the, this username uh, has to be the same username what we have on the local router and then the password and the password has to be Cisco123. Okay, let's do the same thing on the router 2 as well. On the router 2 also interface s1 by 0 ppp pap send username username has to be the same name on the local router and the password is cisco123 so just confirm whether it is correct or not yes it is now once i configure now we can see uh, there are some messages finally you'll see the interface status will be up now you can see some authorization request from the router 2 ID length router 1, authenticating the peer and then sending the PAP login request, received a PAP login request uh, and then you can see these are the actual backend protocols which are used by PPP for authentication process and then finally after after uh, verifying you can see the response is pass, nothing but the response is correct so it's going to make the interface up. Now, if you see the configuration, I, I just did exactly the same thing what I have shown you here, this configuration. There's no difference. I have created a username which is going to match the exact host name, remote host name. This is the exact remote host name. And then I have enabled the PPP authentication on the interface with PAP protocol. And then I have to I have to generate a send username, which is which will be my local host name, and the password has to be sent. 